Governor, how acute are these fuel shortages in Sri Lanka? How acute are the dollar shortages? The fuel shortage is propelled by two concerns uh, or two uh, types of activities that are taking place. One is that we need to ensure that there is enough of fuel in the country. And two, a great deal of electricity also needs to be now generated out of fuel, mainly because the rains have been uh, not in our favor, and that has put an additional pressure. However, we have requested the government to make a sharp increase in the fuel prices as well as the electricity prices. So there would be a natural reduction in the demand as well. As you know, Sri Lanka today has uh, one of the lower price levels in fuel at the pump, and that's not a sustainable situation in the current context. So we have made a very clear appeal to the government uh, to do so, to increase the prices. And at the same time, we have also asked the government to uh, ensure that the uh, non-essential items are also increased uh, in duty levels so that there can be a reduction in the overall import demand as well. As you know, notwithstanding the challenges at present, there has been a great deal of imports taking place and some have been of non-essential items which we can do without in this time of uh, challenge. So we would expect the government to take those steps and if those are taken, the, the incremental reductions in demand of fuel as well as non-essential items would help us to manage this period in a reasonably uh, satisfactory manner. Governor Martin here. Let me quickly jump into the question. Good to see you again and welcome back to the show. So theoretically, what you're saying sounds like it would work, and that is essentially pass the cost down, or, uh, down to uh, the end consumer. But... Your country is in a situation where I know shopping malls where you are in the capital, Colombo, uh, they've been forced to turn off power to conserve uh, energy. You've got cars stranded in the middle of the road and just left there because there's uh, no fuel. I mean, how really feasible is the idea of passing the cost on to the end consumer? I mean, I understand that uh, power in Sri Lanka right now, you are running... Uh, not semi brownouts for up to seven and a half hours a day. I mean, how much more can the average Sri Lankan be squeezed? Is what I'm trying to ask. Although you say that, if you go about in Colombo, you will find that all the neon signs are on, and there are traffic jams which are sometimes quite quite uh, uh, awkward. So it means that there are people who are able to manage at these prices, and as soon as the power uh, is there. Many people use the power for the types of activities that they couldn't do during the time that they did uh, uh, have the power cut. So I think it's a dichotomy of sorts, and we need to address it in a way that these institutions which are supplying power as well as fuel are also brought to rational levels of uh, uh, financial feasibility. And at the same time, we got to ensure that the people who are using it are using it a lot more carefully. That's why we have not only asked the government to increase the prices, because which are very, very low in the, in the context of the South Asian region itself, uh, and also to ensure that we have uh, new ways of uh, renewable energy coming in. This has been a call for the past six or seven years. Unfortunately, that had not been done soon enough. So I think now, finally, as a result of this uh, crisis of sorts in the world, as well as the challenges that we are facing, we believe yes. that the government will now fast track that as well the renewable energy part. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.